We all know by now that a good four-seam fastball is supposed to have a little bit of rad to it, but it can also have a little bit of this and a little bit of this. Today, we're going to discuss the different four-seam profiles we see at the big league level. What's up, guys? My name is Chris Langan, and I'm a pitching coordinator here at Driveline Baseball. In this video, we're going to discuss four-seam fastballs and their different movement profiles across the league. If you haven't yet, you should check out our video on pitch movement and spin, which is a great introductory to make sure you understand all of the context of what we're talking about in this video. Additionally, we've already broken down all of the breaking ball profiles, curveballs, cutters, sliders, in previous videos. So be sure to check those out if you're curious on what the movement profiles look like for those pitches. Assuming you've got the basics of spin and movement contextualized, we're good to get in the meat and potatoes of this video. If you've seen our series on breaking balls, you know that there's a lot of variation across pitch shapes at the big league level. With four seamers, that isn't quite the case as if a lot of pitches are actually clustered closer to one another compared to say the slider or a curveball. But that being said, each inch of vertical break is so important that it's absolutely mandatory that we bracket these pitches as well based off their vertical and horizontal break values. We'll mention this periodically throughout the video, but we can't overestimate the importance of this. When you're looking at fastball profiles, you have to take into consideration the pitcher's release height. Just to let pitchers such as Craig Kimbrell, Josh Hader, Paul Sewald actually see their fastball profiles really play up compared to just the movement metrics due to the fact they get these vertical break values from very low release heights. A four seam movement profile is going to vary primarily due to three things. How efficient or inefficient the pitch is, the arm angle or arm slot the pitcher has, and then the raw spin rate the pitcher is able to impart onto the baseball. There is also some non-magnus components to four seam fastballs that will have a big effect on their overall movement profile, but relative to the other pitch types, the four seamer tends to have the least amount of non-magnus or non-spin based movement. Do know it's a part of it, but know that we probably won't get into that discussion too heavily in this video. The four seam movement buckets we've noted for this video are the dead zone fastball, the gyro fastball, the inefficient fastball, the relative cut fastball, the standard four seam fastball, and then our rider variants, the generic rider, the ride and run, and the cut ride heater. To visualize the different four seam profiles across the league, let's take a look at these classified four seamers from Justin Verlander, Brad Kelleher, and Edwin Diaz. In this series, we reclassify Verlander's four seamer as a ride and run fastball, Kelleher's as a relative cut fastball, and Edwin Diaz's as a dead zone fastball. Again, Diaz is a great example of a pitcher who does this from a low release site. Nonetheless, for the contents of this video, we will consider his fastball a dead zone. For this video, we're going to work our way from the bottom of the movement chart, meaning our sinking fastballs, such as the sinker and the runner, which are primarily seen in sinker profiles, all the way to the top where we get to our rider variants. Due to their scarcity across four seam fastball profiles, we're going to group together the sinker and the running fastball. They make up just 3% of all four seam usage league wide. In the case of the four seamer that ends up with sinker movement metrics, a good bet can be had that this is simply a low slot pitcher throwing their version of a four seam fastball. Either the pitcher doesn't gain anything from flipping to a two seam grip and tags their fastball as a four seamer, or they'll target this pitch up in the zone and try to flatten out the angle of the pitch from a lower slot. Running fastballs are fairly similar. More or less, these pitches avoid the dead zone simply through having enough horizontal break on the pitch to give it an identity. These are far more common in sinker profiles and typically come equipped with around 12 to 13 inches of lift as opposed to the 15 you're seeing on your screen. The dead zone fastball is a pitch with essentially equal parts horizontal break and equal parts vertical break. Overall, about 8% of classified four seamers ended up with these metrics. Few pitchers can truly spin themselves out of this profile. Pitchers with a higher release height may find it advantageous to try a sinker if they get some inadvertent cut at release. There are several pitchers who throw this from a lower release height and actually have a decent bit of success. For pitchers who don't have either of those, they'll typically need to throw the pitch very hard to make up for the suboptimal movement profile or excel in another area, such as command or utilizing other pitches in the arsenal. At release, the pitcher will impart near equal parts side spin and back spin. As a result, the pitch will typically see its spin direction be anywhere from 120 to 140. We will next transition to our cut or more gyroscopic type heaters, starting with the gyro fastball. This pitch has rarely been thrown, coming in with just 3% usage league wide. This is essentially the same movement profile as a gyro cutter, though it's thrown as a primary offering rather than a pitch to work off of a fastball. Garrett Richards is best known for having this offering, with Marcus Stroman and Reds prospect Graham Ashcraft 
also being rare examples of pitchers who utilize this as a four-seam fastball. The inefficient four-seam fastball is responsible for all kinds of headaches in player development. Across the last two seasons, about 11% of four-seam profiles have landed here. These are four-seam fastballs that typically land anywhere from 70 to 90% spin efficiency, depending on the spin direction and raw spin rate the pitcher has. These pitchers generally have an ultimatum. Either learn to turn over the pitch and obtain higher efficiency to make it move more like a standard four seamer, or you can have them throw a two seam or one seam variant and see if you can't get some drop after release to turn it into a sinker. The problem with the inefficient heater is that it typically lacks league average carry and also doesn't have any uniqueness in its horizontal break. They're neither generating cut nor getting any type of arm side run. The one pitcher who may be exempt from needing to worry about this is the low slot hurler who needs to cut the offering to obtain vertical break as turning it over doesn't get the job done relative to their release slot. Unfortunately, this may cost that pitcher velocity if cutting the pitch doesn't come naturally. Dylan Seas is an example of a pitcher who leaned in to turning over the heater and saw significant progress from 2020 to 2021, gaining three inches of vertical break relative to his 2020 season. We've been relatively pessimistic thus far in this video with the fastball profiles we've shown. Let's turn the page here and get some true four seam fastballs starting with the relative cut heater. This pitch was thrown just as often as the inefficient heater with about 10% usage across four seam profiles. The big difference between this pitch and the inefficient fastball is that we've actually got some personality with the horizontal break. While the pitch may not have true cut to it, it'll give that impression to the hitter given the pitch will have near zero horizontal break. The average four seamer has about eight inches of run. So throwing this in there will certainly provide a different look to the hitter. The pitcher also comes equipped with near league average vertical break, making it easier to build an arsenal of other pitches around it relative to the gyro heater we discussed earlier. At release, the pitcher will basically throw it like the back spinner we discussed in our cutter variations video. Most pitchers will do this naturally, whereas others, you may widen their four seam grip or give them something more like a cutter grip and see if they can't turn that inefficient fastball into more of a relative cutting fastball like we're seeing here. We'll now get to the more efficient four seam fastballs, starting with the standard four seamer, which has far and away the highest usage across four seamers in the league at 28%. The standard four seamer is typically thrown at a high efficiency from a normal release height. Pitchers who can acquire this movement profile from release height under five feet, seven inches are at a massive advantage as those pitches have consistently played above their ball flight metrics in big sample sizes. Some pitchers will still be around 85% efficiency and have a high enough spin rate or some non-magnus movement to spin themselves into 16 plus inches of vertical break. These are the pitchers who have massive potential as if they can turn over that fastball to 95% efficiency, they will probably get in our rider profiles, meaning at least 18 and a half inches of vertical break. Kevin Gossman, Max Scherzer, and Kikuchi are examples of pitchers with a standard four seamer. As we discussed previously, Josh Hader is a great example of a pitcher with this profile who's gonna see it play way above its pitch metrics due to that release height. Most pitchers are gonna throw this pitch with about a one o'clock spin direction and at least 90% spin efficiency. Each of the rider variants performs exceptionally well with the main difference being horizontal movement. We'll start with the standard rider. Riders are the second most common four seam profile thrown in the league with 17% of four seamers having this movement profile. This is generally achieved through simply having a more vertical arm angle. The closer you release the ball above your head, the easier it is to apply backspin to the baseball. While having a high spin rate helps, the common denominator is getting all of that spin rate into the baseball, meaning spin efficiency of near 100%. John Means, Nick Pavetta, and Lucas Giolito are examples of pitchers who meet the criteria above. At release, you'll see a more vertical slot combined with essentially no gyro spin at release. The ride and run profile maintains that good vertical carry while also bringing on some personality with above average arm side run. It has made up 9% of all four seam profiles since 2020. This profile is typically only achieved through having a spin rate near 2,500, along with near 100% spin efficiency. Spin direction on these offerings are typically one o'clock. It is entirely possible that this pitch will start to fade due to foreign substance crackdowns. Garrett Cole, Michael Kopech, and Justin Verlander are examples of pitchers with this profile. The cut ride heater is the least common of all four seam profiles, but it's typically the most sought after by analysts. Clayton Kershaw is best known for utilizing this profile across his career. Pitchers combine both elite vertical break with near cutter horizontal break. These pitchers are able to get elite vertical carry while also omitting the side spinning components of the pitch. Once again, to generate this type of vertical break, 
they'll need to have more vertical arm slots. The alternative route is to have a small amount of gyro spin and otherwise being behind the ball to achieve a lead carry. One of the tools we utilize here at Driveline Baseball to predict pitch quality is the blob. The blob allows us to plug in pitch metrics, mainly velocity and horizontal and vertical break, and summarize the quality of the pitch based just on its ball flight characteristics. For instance, if you're deciding between whether or not you should throw a four seamer or a sinker, you could simply leverage the blob and compare those pitch shapes. This Stuff Plus model was developed by Driveline's Chief Research Officer, Dan O'Coin. Appreciate everyone for following along today. We'll have a video discussing how to throw a four seam fastball coming out very soon. If you liked the video, go ahead, give it a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe. Any questions, remarks, comments you guys have, please leave them below and we can get into a nitty gritty conversation and get more complex with the topic of four seam fastballs. Thanks for watching today.